So the title of section R.2 is kind of misleading. We're really just talking about fractions, but fancy terms, fancy language, we call it fraction notation because we can represent numbers in different forms, in different notations. So we're going to look at fractions. An example of fraction notation for a number is two-thirds. The top number is the numerator, and the bottom number is the denominator. Denominator. Okay. I liked my little joke. There's a fine line between a numerator and denominator, because there is there's a fine line in between there. So we start have to we have to start talking about what kind of numbers we can plug into a fraction. I don't want to put a decimal in there. I don't want to have 0.2 divided by 3. That won't really make logical sense. So, what are we working with? The whole numbers consist of the naturals that we learned about in the last section. So, the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, all the way up infinitely. But now we're going to include 0. So, the whole numbers are the naturals, all the countings, and 0. Another group of numbers, another classification, are the arithmetic numbers. So what are those? The non-negative rational numbers. That's another name for it. They're just the whole numbers, so um, the naturals, zero, and now in addition, fractions. So a number like two-thirds would be considered arithmetic. So, a little definition box, just to sum it up in nice language. Arithmetic numbers are the whole numbers and the fractions. All of these numbers can be named with a fraction notation A over B, where A and B are whole numbers. And what do we have to remember with fractions? What's the one thing that can never happen down in the denominator? I can never divide by what? Zero. So, in this case, with that notation, b cannot be zero. So all numbers can be written in fraction notation, even if we have like a whole number. So how can that happen? I want to write 8 equivalently as a fraction. So what can I divide 8 by without changing the number? One. Everything is divisible by 1, and we get out the same thing. So we can always write any number in fraction notation, which is pretty cool. So we want to start being able to combine these numbers. So what happens if I start with some number and I add 0 to it? So if I have 2 and I add 0, what do I get out? 2. Same thing. So 0 is called the additive, additive identity. So identity in math just means we get the same thing back out. And in this case, zero is the additive identity because that's the operation we're working with. So we'll talk about the different identities of the operations. But for addition, the identity is zero. I can add zero to any number, and I get the same thing back out. All right, so what about the multiplicative identity? If I take two, for example, what can I multiply it by? to get out the exact same thing, 1. So in this case, it is the multiplicative, since we're dealing with multiplication, multiplicative identity. So I multiply, and I get the same thing back out when I multiply by 1. So a few equivalent expressions for the number 1 are like what? You have it written for you, 5 divided by 5, 3 divided by 3, 26 divided by 26. Notice the pattern. Same thing divided by the same thing. How many times does 5 go into 5? Once. How many times does 3 go into 3? Once. How many times does 26 go into 26? Once. Same thing divided by the same thing. We always get out 1. So, we want to be able to manipulate these fractions. Make them look different, but still have them be equivalent using these different rules. So, that first example that you have, we want to write a fraction expression equivalent to two-thirds, but with a denominator of 12. 
So I'm looking to turn this fraction into something over 12, and I want it to be equivalent. So just working with the denominators, what do I have to multiply 3 by to turn into 12? 4. But whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So we also have to multiply by 4 up there. Because in reality, what are we multiplying by in between there? What is 4 divided by 4? 1. So we're just using that multiplicative identity. Okay, I'm multiplying by 1. I'm going to get the same thing out, but I'm changing what it looks like. So what numerator are we looking at? Multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. 8 over 12. That's the same as 2 thirds. Okay, another one. 2 thirds, but now I want a denominator of 30. So again, I want to multiply by a factor of 1 and change what the fraction looks like. So how do I need to change 3 into 30? Multiplying by a factor of 10. Again, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So we're just multiplying by 1, changing what the fraction looks like. So 2 thirds is equivalent to 20 over 30. All right. So your turn to get creative. Take that try. Multiply each of these things by 1 to find three different fraction expressions for 7 over 8. So take 7 over 8, multiply by a factor of 1, and get three different equivalent forms, whichever numbers your heart desires. So you can multiply by anything. I'm going to multiply by a factor of 2 over 2. What am I multiplying by? 1. But I get an equivalent fraction to 7 over 8 but with a new denominator, 16, and it's still an equivalent fraction. Whoop, there we go. Again, we can multiply by anything that we want. Same thing divided by the same thing. Again, new denominator, new numerator. Same fraction, different way to write it. Still equivalent. I'm just going to follow the pattern and keep moving up in the integers. So again, equivalent fraction coming out to 7 over 8. But we have new numerators, new denominators. And you might have chosen some different numbers. All of them, I'm sure, are equivalent, as long as you're multiplying by the same thing divided by the same thing, multiplying by 1 in each of those cases. So we also want to be able to reverse that process. If I start out with a complicated fraction, if I can make it simpler, I also want to be able to do that. So we know that first example, one half is the same as two fourths is the same as four eighths. They all represent the same number. And we can write an arithmetic number in a lot of different ways. We just saw um, a few different options with seven eighths. We have infinitely many ways to write a number. But the simplest fraction notation is oftentimes what we're after. Simplest fraction notation. So, what does that mean? Smallest numerator that's possible, smallest denominator that's possible. This process is called simplifying. So whenever you see the words simplify this, simplify, simplify the expression, we want to break it down to its core, to the smallest numerator and denominator possible. So we're just doing the reverse. So looking at the first example, what do 10 and 15 both share in common that I can take out of both of them? Factor of... 5. So I can rewrite 10 as 5 times 2, and I can rewrite 15 as 5 times 3. And again, what is the same thing divided by the same thing? 1. Those two are going to cancel out. They're going to go away. So 10 fifteenths is equivalent to 2 thirds. We simplified that fraction, wrote it in smaller terms. So let's just keep going, get some practice. 36 over 24. What do those two factors share in common that I can take out of both of them? Factor of 6. So I can rewrite 36 as 6 times 6, 24. as 6 times 4. And again, what's going to happen? What's going to cancel? 
We have the same thing divided by the same thing. So we get out 1. 1 times 6 over 4 is there. But have we broken it down all the way? Is that in its simplest form, simplest fraction? Do 4 and 6 share anything in common that we can take out of those? Factor of 2. So again, I can break up 6 into 3 and 2, 4 into 2 and 2. Same thing divided by the same thing is going to be gone. I'm left with 3 halves. So we could have factored out 12 out of each of these. Or we can start with smaller factors and just simplify a few times. Either way, it'll get us there. All right, what about 72 over 9? So in this case, we're going to get out a whole number since 9 divides 72 evenly. So what's really going on when we're doing this division? How can I break up 72 into a factor of 9 and something else? 9 times 8 gives me 72. My denominator and keeping the same. So again, same thing divided by the same thing turns into 1. So we get out 8. We could really write 8 over 1 since I canceled and I'm left with a factor of 1 still, but 8 divided by 1 is still 8. So this is not considered simplified. We always want to get broken down as far as we can go. So take those two tries. Simplify those two fractions into their simplest notation. There's a couple different ways that you can go about these. The first one, when I look at it, I say 27 and 54, they're both divisible by 3. So I'm going to break up 27 into 9 times 3, 54 into 18 times 3. You could go a different route as long as you get to the same simplified answer. Same thing divided by the same thing. And what else do you notice? Can we go any farther? I can break up 18 into 9 times 2. And again, same thing, divided by the same thing is going to be gone. So I have a 2 left in the denominator, but what do I have up in the numerator now? So when I cancel the 9 divided by 9, 9 goes into 9 one time exactly. So we still need that placeholder. Don't be tempted to put the 2 up in the numerator. Wherever they come is where they have to stay in their placement. So we need that placeholder one. Simplifies to one half. And what about the second one? We're going to get out a whole number. But again, how can I break up 48 into a factor of 12 and something else? So what do we need? Factor of 4. So same thing divided by the same thing. is 1. It's gone. We just get 4 left over. So we need to be able to go back and forth between the two. I may need to write an equivalent fraction with a larger denominator, or I might want to simplify and break it down so I can work with easier numbers.